We're talking with Steve Harganon. Steve, thanks for talking with us this morning. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself to folks? Hi, Howard. It's a pleasure, as always. So uh, I'm Steve Hargadon. I started a social network for educators five years ago called Classroom 2.0 um, that it gained a fair amount of traction and I like to think helped us to think about using social networking uh, as part of teaching and learning. Um, I have an interview series called The Future of Education at futureofeducation.com and I sort of specialize in talking about the future of education with regard to openness, uh, Web 2.0 technologies, and, and how we're rethinking uh, learning based on these tools. So I know you've got the, what, what you're calling the Teacher 2.0 initiative, <laughs> which, which seems like a grand kind of personal learning network for, for teachers. So why don't you tell us a, a little bit about your thinking about that and how it's proceeding? Sure. So I love this idea, um, and the idea is sort of how uh, the tools of the web are reshaping how educators learn, and that if we want them to be able to sort of effectively help our students become learners, that it's very really important for them to learn to use these tools themselves. So that's the Teacher 2.0 initiative. Uh, I created a Mighty Bell learning, um, sort of a free online learning program around this. We have a Ning network, of course, um, and I'm actually working on a book called Teacher 2.0. And the idea is to kind of get past the sort of superficial sense of we need to bring these tools into education and really look sort of at the deeper level of how do these tools transform learning and so as an educator how would your own learning be affected by them? You've, you've interviewed everybody. You've just got a, a, a wonderful <laughs> library of interviews, many of which I listen to as podcasts when I, when I walk in various places. What would you highlight as two or three of the things that you've learned um, that's worth passing along to, to teachers and, and, and educators about the way learning is changing these days? Well, so sort of the biggest takeaway for me has been that this is a, you know, a millennia old conversation. I mean, this is one of the great conversations of humanity, which is, you know, what is learning and what is teaching and how do they interact with each other? So for me, the great blessing or benefit of the interview series has been the degree to which it showcases the diversity of ways of thinking about learning. And, um, and that, we, that this is something that's really important to talk about, that learning is a process. So like democracy, like we, when we think about democratic processes, we think about the value of participation. Somehow, we don't do that with education sort of currently, and that's too broad a, a stroke, but, you know, in many ways, the sort of the larger national dialogues around teaching and learning tend to not reflect the fact that this is a process and th that there is real value in individuals engaging. And so that, for me, has been the big takeaway, sort of how we get back to the sense of um, a civil dialogue, an engaged conversation around education without necessarily having to be right. Well, you know, I, d I did an interview with Shelley Terrell about personal learning networks, and and I've you've interviewed me for your interview series, and I've I've watched and listened to several of them. What we're talking about here is really using the state of the art technology. You used what it used to be called Illuminate, now called Blackboard Collaborate, that enables audio and video. Plus, I've seen it looks like more than a hundred people using the the text chat at one time, you, you can tell it's a community right away by the way people are actively chatting with each other while you are interviewing and they're putting URLs um, in, into the, the, the timeline there. Um, tell us a little bit more about this idea of having a virtual conference rather than a face-to-face -face conference. So I really love this technology, and uh, I, d I did use it as a part of the Classroom 2.0 initiative to gather the community together in a, a very much more synchronous way, uh, so that when they offered me a job at Illuminate, I was quite happy to take it. Uh, they've since been bought by Blackboard, and I now only do part-time work for them. But uh, you know, for me, this synchronous technology, this capability of us talking the way we are with Skype right now, or, or the way you can in collaborate with sort of a richer set of features, uh, this is very much Web 2.0, although we don't call it that. It's about participation. It's about engagement and activity using the tools of the web. It may not be printed text, but it is uh, participation. So uh, a year ago, I did sort of a bold thing, which was I said, you know, I want to hold a, a worldwide conference on globally connecting 
students and teachers. We called it the Global Education Conference. And Lucy Gray and I co-chaired this. And um, it was really a fabulous experience. We, we had uh, about 15,000 attendee logins over the course of five days. We had about 500 actual virtual sessions. We've done it again this year. And also this year I held a Future of Libraries conference with San Jose State University that had a stunning 7,500 people sign up for a two-day virtual conference with 150 sessions. So there are some positives and negatives here, but the positives to me significantly outweigh the negatives. The negative is it's an additional huge amount of content, right? I mean, 150 sessions on libraries. So you could spend a year and, and maybe not watch all of them in your free time. The positive is that this, when you rethink a conference uh, taking place, uh, as taking place virtually, you get to kind of shift some of the core assumptions of a conference. So uh, space and time are really critical factors in a physical conference. So you have to vet uh, conference proposals much more closely than you would in a virtual conference. So what we did was we said for both of these conferences, we want them to be highly inclusive. We want somebody from West Africa to actually present and not just participate by watching. And this has worked brilliantly. I mean, I'm very intrigued by this. Uh, you know, we do a small amount of vetting, which is if the, if the proposal isn't related to the conference topic, then we really say you just can't do it. But 90% of the conference presentation proposals have been accepted at these conferences. And the quality stays really, really high. And, uh, you know, again, it's sort of a brilliant coincidence of activity. This year, I decided to hold all of the organizing in the Ning networks. So for global education, we use Lucy Gray's global education name. For library 2.0, we use my library 2.0 network. And if you think about what you're actually accomplishing, you're helping people connect with each other. And that works brilliantly in this environment. So uh, we like to call uh, the global education conference the Woodstock of virtual conferencing. I mean, at the end of five days, people were, they were giddy with this belief and sense that they had connected with people all over the world who were organizations who specialize in connecting students and teachers across uh, the world and most of them didn't know about each other and they were able to connect and the students were connecting and the teachers were connecting and and this to me is sort of fabulous I, you know it raises this really interesting issue of how much connecting can we do and how much time do we have during the day and you know this overwhelming tidal wave of connectivity and content at the same time we're gonna sort that out and the end result is just so fantastic that you'd say okay uh, we've we're, we've stepped past something uh, that we're in a new territory now where I have people from 183 countries in my Ning network. That's only 10 countries away from having somebody from every country in the world. Kind of stunning. Wow. Well, you know, I hope that we can we can uh, use your experience and wisdom to try to do something like that with the DML community. I would love to see the the people who pay attention to DML Central and people who pay attention to uh, Teacher 2.0 become aware of each other. And that's what PLNs are about. So um, this is not the last of it. <laughs> Looking forward to talking with you some more in the near future. Thanks. Thank you, Howard. Have a great day.